I like having fun. I like to laugh. I like to meet people who can make me laugh. I like having fun. Yes, I like to laugh. I like having fun. Okay. Time ago, we used to do this back in the old days. I feel like it's time to do it now because it's a new year. It's the middle of January. I know everybody's feeling down, feeling low, got Omicron, and people are wondering what's going on. So now what we're gonna do is everybody stand up. I'm looking at the Zoom. I want everybody to get on up. Stand up out of your chair and put your hands together. It's called a clap. Big done, get on up. That's it, Matt. You're not, you're not exempt. Everybody get on up, and we get the blood flowing. I see some of you, you scumbag Shiler's iPad sitting there like he's not exempt from my rules and regulations! Stand the fuck up! Come on now, everybody up. What, what, oh, and, and listen, if you have uh, condi a condition that makes it hard for you to stand up, please don't exert yourself. We appreciate you, we love you, and we respect all kinds of people. Uh, I stand, why shouldn't you? Jake Lawson's got it on! He's got it going on, he's dancing. Speaking of which, I have a big announcement. A big announcement. We're having a new contest. The new contest is this. As you all know, everyone gets, uh, everyone loves our uh, countdown music, the Kmart music that precedes the intro. I am now announcing the Kmart, uh, the Kmart countdown music interpretive dance contest. What I want everybody to do is take one minute of the countdown music, grab it however you want to do it, rip it, play it live, and let's get uh, this, let's get a minute of you doing an interpretive dance to that music, send it in, we will announce winners uh, next week. Go on iTunes and buy it. <laughs> That's the news! Fun contest. Wow. Don't you like that? Man, I just, that, was, I, that was a great start, though. Well, the contest was great, but the dancing was great. It was like, it was like, of course, a, don't we all feel like better? Ella, Woo! I feel better. I'm ready to go. I like, feel alive. I, mean, I feel alive again. Ellen knew what she we was doing. We should start every yeah? show with a little dance, a yeah. little workout. Well, like Ellen yeah. does it. Yeah. It works. Is it yeah. Ellen or Alan? It's, uh, <laughs> it's Alan. Alan. Yeah. Ellen. El Ellen. Ellen. Uh, oh, yes. OHL. Someone chat in the chat says OHL is the new Ellen. That's right. Ellen is done. She's out. She's been. Uh, Disgraced for her behavior. Uh, people back in the, there was lots of controversy there. People saying that she was an abusive boss. Mm -hmm. and many people have said that. Many people have said it. And I don't, I personally don't have that reputation. <laughs> Correct? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that right? <laughs> I'm known as a sweetheart. I felt terrible. You know, of course, Bob Saget passed away. Terrible news. I didn't know him, but. Oh. Oh, that's Doug. That was me. That was a little late. That was Sorry. an accident. Did not mean to that. Have... That's mean. I started getting worried though, because I thought, you know, the thing that comes out about him is he's the nicest guy, the yeah. nicest guy. All these people telling stories about him texting, saying how much he loves them, and I'm thinking, <clears> I gotta <throat> get on that. I gotta start. That's... Tim, gotta start I gotta, texting yeah. us more. I gotta more. start nice getting stuff. these messages out there, how much I love you and how important you are to me, because when I go. <laughs> I need these stories coming yeah, out. Yeah, you gotta have these texts yeah. and screen grabs coming out. Uh-huh. He was the nicest guy I've ever met. That's what they were gonna say about me, apparently. <laughs> Hopefully. So I gotta get on that's, that. That should be your resolution, like 2020. What are they gonna say? What are that's gonna be a good topic but, today. But no, what? start on it though. You should be like telling people you love them. I'm when telling you, go, you right now. Okay, Why don't you, you listen? Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm like Just, Bob Dylan uh, in a lot of ways. Today's a topic though. if you're calling in. What's your quote if they call you and ask what uh, when I pass away? That's the <laughs> there quote. There it is. That's the, that's the topic. When, when, do, when I drop... Of what I say and play it on the show. Hmm? <laughs> they basically take clips of what I say and play it on the show. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, he seemed to... Uh, I don't know, he liked the Beatles, I guess? Can't yes, think of anything sir. else. Yes, sir. Um, anyways, he was into cancel culture. He's so good looking. Well, what do you mean he was into it? Like he was a like, part of cancel culture. He was always right. he was shaming, he was doing the canceling and the shaming. canceling mm -hmm. Baked Alaska and, and oh, Joe Rogan, did? all that the, stuff. He's yeah. obsessed. Saget with was it. was canceling these guys. It was big into Oh, it. you were. I was. Oh, <laughs> no, I see. No, <laughs> I'm just working all this stuff out, guys. We have a great show today. I want to welcome my uh, co-hosts, not really uh, <laughs> partners in crime, 
Doug Lusenhop, of course. Doug. And Vic Berger. Uh, Hello, everybody. And I gotta say, Vic's got another new look. Yeah, do you, what do you think? This is my new year fedora. Is this a Gorin Brothers purchase? This was very, it was, it was like 20 bucks. Well, it was like, I mean, yeah. Fine. It was from a Pasadena hat shop, went in there. Guy looked at my face, looked at my oh. head. He's like, let's cover that up. And, <laughs> and he gave me this Did fedora. you say, like, I need a hat? Yeah, any old, any need hat a hat. Will work. You so were, many you that, were yeah. explaining to him that you've been through bandanas, you've <laughs> been through visors. Yeah, I, different, I wore bandanas differently in different ways. You know, yeah. like I, had, I wore them out. I did visors. And then the visors, like, you can't really clean them very well. So, like, if you wear them a few times, they start stinking. Uh -huh. And if you wash them, they fall apart. Well, it's like not like you're going to wash that hat. No, I'm not going to wash this. But it's like it's made to, like, like push off my head sweat. Uh -huh. I know, think it looks kinda, nice. I really yeah, do. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. I can't get away with wearing any of those kind of hats. I look terrible in a, in a traditional hat. I even bought a, you know what, I bought like a Woody Allen style bucket hat oh, the other day, yeah. thinking I might get it, like like the Office Hours hat. Mm -hmm. And I and I do yeah. like those hats, yeah. and I'm not going to wear that hat. I mean, please. <laughs> uh, but people You're should check out all the merch. merch. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I just don't, I look like a fool, and I can't go, like, I go to the airport a lot, and... Uh, I just, I need to put something on my head for whatever reason. There's plenty of people that walk around without anything on their head, but I feel weird without a hat on sometimes. It seems inappropriate. But I then I get a, a baseball look, cap, yeah. then I feel like I'm 16. I'm just like, what is, Do you ever wear baseball do? caps backwards? I don't. No. I don't. All right. Um, <laughs> Japanese Breakfast will be on the show today. <laughs> That's an exciting get, an exciting gift to us. She's got her record I've been really enjoying. Um... Genuinely, a lot of times I come on and I give you a, a big pile of bullshit about what I like because this is the game we play. That's show business, baby. But today's a little different. I happen to be a genuine Tim, fan. Speaking of breakfast, what did you eat for breakfast? Anything? <laughs> uh, hey, listen, last week was a wild <laughs> one, wasn't it? Last week's show was a little weird, wasn't it? A little weird. A wild, a little, little, little weird. A lot of complaints from the yeah. uh, from the peanut gallery. People saying it was uh, like a bad acid trip. I, I I agree. I'm not proud of that. I'm not proud of that experience. <laughs> um, speaking of airplanes, I got back last night. Uh, I was down in New Orleans again for a few days doing some work, and uh, this is a funny thing happened to me. Um, well, the last time I was there, I was sitting at, I don't know if I told this story, I was sitting at a, a bar, at a restaurant at the bar by myself, and uh, having a meal, and who walks in, uh, now I'm in New Orleans, folks, right? So who would be, would be the most, like, stereotypical person to walk in and sit next to me in New Orleans? Like Fats Domino. Fats Domino, Fats Domino Jr. <laughs> the Big Easy. Um... Randy Newman, maybe? I mean, no, was, I mean, I don't know how well known this guy is, but is uh, the, the Nine Inch Nails guy, Trent Reznor. Oh, is he yeah, from New Orleans? He's down there. He's not. Oh, oh, if, uh, oh screaming Jay Hawkins. Is, is, is he? No, it, James <laughs> James Carville mm. comes in, right? We all know James Carville, mm -hmm. the Raging Cajun. That's how he's known known as. Is he kind right. of a CNN pundit? Yeah, he's guy? a he's a political operative. He was a big uh, Clinton's. Uh, Puppet master back yeah. in the day. He told all like this. I, I think I think what the Democrats need to start doing is they start, start, start get on the offense. Because if you're not going to be on the offense, then you're going to be on the defense. And then when you're on the defense, you can't win. <laughs> <laughs> he just does that shit all day long on TV. Now, nah, here's what I think about that. Now, the problem with Biden is he just come up and get he gonna come up against the uh, uh, Republican opposition. And they keep coming at him, or he's gonna have a big problem thing. next year. Like, <laughs> just bullshit. Now, here's the thing. Now, here's the thing. So I sit next, so he sits next to me, and I, as a guy that's often in the other side of that situation, I give, I don't bother him. I don't, I don't really, I don't, I'm not like a fan of his or anything. I just recognize him, right? So I just let him be. This was like last month when I was down there for a few days. Cut to, a lot of people do that when they're telling stories. Uh -huh. Cut to, it's like you're watching a movie. Dissolved to. <laughs> yeah. uh, me sitting in my beautiful business class seat on my Delta flight coming back. And who walks on the plane but James Carville. Carville. Carville's back, baby. Heading to L.A. But here's the weird thing. Well, the one weird thing is like, 
Everywhere I turn, I'm yeah, seeing Carville. <laughs> I'm getting Carvilled. Uh, For a car guy, he's in a lot of planes. <laughs> you know, why doesn't he open up a dealership or something? And he gets, he sits two seats behind me. He's there maybe less than a minute before he gets up and heads to the uh, back of the cabin. No, 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 no. He gets, he, I don't know why he seeds his seat to go sit in the back. And I can't figure out, I, he, I, it's a total did he mystery. To, he didn't speak to a person or he just like stood up? And he, he said, I'm gonna sit in the back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go sit in the back. <laughs> nah, with here's the, the thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be with the proletariat. <laughs> see if I, if people come see me sitting in first class, they're gonna think that I'm some kind of elite. Even though I just got done having my children uh, eating my children down a Comet Pizza. <laughs> mm -hmm. Delicious. I just had dinner with Hillary Clinton. You know what we had? We had a three-year-old. Mm-hmm. Tim, did you? We, ate, we harvested them <laughs> organs. We had pizza. Mm -hmm. and hamburgers. Mm. I sucked down their liver. <laughs> mm. And adrenochrome. That told me that adrenochrome going to uh, help me grow hair. Hadn't worked yet. I'm still bald as a cucumber. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hear the thing. That's exactly like that, what. Get some clips of him by now. I like that that could go into Cosby though too. Though. Say. <laughs> Anyhow. Um, do, well, did somebody sit in his seat like a disabled veteran or something? Or, disabled veteran. <laughs> like maybe he was doing it as a good guy. And mm. uh, you didn't. It wasn't that. It wasn't that. So that seat so, stayed so empty. No one, that business seat <laughs> could, was empty. That business you could, you seat could stayed out. empty. You could stretch mm -hmm. out. Maybe he took one Federal whip. regulations yeah. require me to. Tim, I think that's about you, <laughs> to be yeah, honest. Yeah, what if he took that's a whiff it. and he's like, something else? No, no, right. I, no, I smell no. hippie over here. No, 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 no. Huh? I was two full seats away. I was like on the other, like th two or three seats away, easily. Mm -hmm. Let me just say. Uh, other, other than that, it was a perfectly nice flight. Got the Mesa, uh, the, I got uh, custom ginger ale. <laughs> I was getting too, here's what happens to me on a plane. They give me a ginger ale. I suck that shit down so quick, I'm chewing the ice. <laughs> and they're right back with more. What? Give me a no, double, double of ginger ale. Wow. Ooh, something quenching that about that. That doesn't happen when I finish my uh, tomato juice in the back. Some you know, down, that's a quenching, that's a quenching. Them. Let's go to hotline. <laughs> Let's go to hotline right now. All right. Mm -hmm. Grant605, you are on the air. Hey, James, thank you so much for being here. <laughs> this is a hey, hey, Tim. James. What's going on, man? Hey, Tim, I was just going to talk to uh, Doug real quick. Uh, put in oh, my man. first bit on that ball. Oh, well, oh. let's. Well, can you just can you hold your horses, damn it? Did you not get the script right. for today? God damn it. I mean, let's I'm talk. Excited, let's talk. Well, let me I'm just sorry. let me you set me this up. up. You got me moving. <laughs> <laughs> Good lord, child. Right. Here's the deal. Now, here's the deal, man. All right, I'm listening. Doug's got a bowl. And we're going to be auctioning it off today throughout the throughout the show in the super chat. If you uh, are oh, watching yeah. us on YouTube right now, this is not a great experience if we're not live, but Doug's got a wonderful bowl. Talk about the bowl for a minute, Doug. Give us a little. You can follow uh, if you follow Doug on Instagram or Twitter. You might have seen this video. He's announced the uh, sale of the bowl. Well, it's a gloss. It's a bit of a gloss finish. It's got um, diamond sort of pattern that does wrap around and taper to a, mm, uh, a bottom, and it, it's kind of an oval ellipse shape. More of an. I don't know if I'd go oval great. on. There's got to be another name for that shape. I mean, That'd be interesting. Yeah. Yeah, question for the audience is what shape is that yeah that's a tapered ellipse is how how what's it's got the a little any geometry kind of fans ring, out there let nice us know what shape that is top mm -hmm. here uh there is a uh, one of the one of the bottom um non-skid pads is missing here so i right, could knock i could knock yeah. a couple bucks so off where, where are we starting the bids at matt well tim i have well, a question <laughs> if, if you're doing it in the super chats yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, we keep the all way the bids. Bids work. I get what, I get <laughs> what you're gonna keep all the. We're going to keep it all. Yeah, we keep all the bids. 
<laughs> it's usually just the higher, the highest bid has to pay. But if, oh, super no, that's right. not how it's this like, one works. That's, no. Well, that that seems a little that seems this a little is like, fishy. Yeah. Hmm. No, no, that's how this. We're not going to refund the the ones that didn't get the bowl. No, no refunds. That oh. doesn't seem right. Hmm. But we're going to. That's how it works. WTKFC the winner, five dollars. The winner is going to get some socks. Yeah. This could be and, our uh, highest grossing we're gonna episode fill the, today. We're going to fill the bowl, or some people are calling it a vase, a vase. Many people are calling it a vase. So you have to spend money to bid on this. <laughs> yeah, that's how it works. <laughs> well, this is not to, my idea, by the uh, way. Let me, let me just say, where's the starting bid at? Five dollars. Keep it low. Okay, we got five dollars, five dollars, five dollars. James Carville here, going to run the auction for you. We already got it. WT WTFKC bids five dollars. Okay. I'm going to sweeten the pot right now. Right now, I'm going to sweeten the pot. We got... A pack of Trident Vibes. It's the tropical, oh, tropical beat. Throw it in the bowl, T. This is the exact container of vi uh, Trident Vibes tropical beat that I did a very successful, fun little parody video of a few weeks ago. Uh, I was my review. Oh yeah, I tried those. Yeah. Uh, what's your review? Uh, you know, they they were all right. Yeah. They they passed the vibe check. They passed the vibe check. Okay. <laughs> Here they are. Ooh, we're up to 10. Okay, so we're throwing that in the bowl. Crawdad says, oh! wow. this bowl looks perfect. Wes, I hope you caught that. I hope you, uh, hope you got that perfect hole in one there. Stand Worldwide up. shipping, by the way, someone asked in the YouTube Worldwide show. shipping. Worldwide shipping. All right, let's do the city of the day. It would be more like worldwide shipping? I lost my city of the day. What happened, guys? This is a disaster. So you want me to play the music? Yeah, just play the, the music. city of the day. All right. City of the day. City of the day is brought to you by Meta Metamucil. Do you spend a lot of time in the metaverse? So much time that your plumbing gets a bit backed up? Well, you're in luck, because the meta, Zuck meta, just meta, invented meta, Metamucil. Meta Metamucil. Meta Metamucil will make your stool thicker, wetter, and softer in the metaverse. Meta, 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 just mix up a cup of our fiber optic fiber, and you'll be cyber ploptic. In fact, you'll be sliding into BMs in no time. So meta, meta, mix meta, up meta, a cup meta, of meta, 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 meta Metamucil, and may the poo fill your metaverse. Meta, Available meta, for meta, purchase meta. with cryptocurrency only. So keep the Bitcoin out of your shit with Meta Metamucil. See, I can make annoying noises too. Let's get into the Zoom room, Matt, and say hi to some. Do, oh, do we have a city of the day? Thanks, Tim. The city Joe. <laughs> Joe. Joe the plumber. Remember Joe the plumber? <laughs> Joe the plumber. He's still plumbing. Hello. Hello, Joe. Uh, I have a, a quick review of no, the No, no. City of the day. City of the day, please. Come on, I don't Joe. got no... All right, you then you're off. You're well, wait, 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 wait. Where are you? We'll get to you later. He didn't get the message. Oh, I'm, well, I'm could, taking that, no shit today. I like his lighting, easier. though. He's Look at his lighting. It's pretty. Uh, camera there. East Try End. Yeah. Stand by, Joe. Uh -huh. I want to hear this yeah, review. Yeah, we want to hear this. Can you hear me? Yes. How's it going? Listen, guys, I want to say, first of all, I'm sick. So that's the reason why I'm looking like shit. But what's Sorry the city that. of the day, shit. sir? Sorry. First things first. It's uh, Malmo, Sweden. There you go. There you go. Hey, that's all I'm great. You look How's fine to me. I don't know. What, are you no, sick I with COVID? I don't know yet. I can't get a, re I can't get a test until Monday because they're, um, they're all out. Oh, so I'm pretty, I am not uh, concerned about it. I'm Monday. really not. Okay, no. let's get back. Thank you for the. Uh, we really love our Swedes. Good. Are we supposed to now? We have, feels like we have to go and do a live show in Sweden. Yeah. Everybody's from Sweden on this. Yeah. Somehow, are yeah. we? Are, are we like? Are we massive stars? He's not in from Sweden, Sweden though. L listen to that accent. No, I'm not. I've been. I've been living here for 15 years though, so I can not speak okay. Swedish. What do you do there? I uh, work in a record shop called oh. uh, Dondimpen. Dondi records. It's been open. All we have is Abo records. What kind of records do you have there? We have uh, experimental, we have a large jazz section, large world section, lots and lots of seven inches, uh, a new, a small new release section, which we have for uh, only small times. So we don't have a large selection of new, new records. Uh, yeah, my name much, is, I think, uh, I think my, you guys yeah, my like name it. is Jürgen, where's your jazz section now? Yeah, yeah. So I can get my new jazz yeah. records. <laughs> 
Do you have a large jazz record section, please? We do. The Sweden's well known for its blues and jazz I need the more, 50s and 60s. I have a bunch more blues and also a lot of jazz, please. <laughs> if you have no jazz yeah. records, that would be uh, ideal for me because I'm trying to buy some jazz records, you see. It's very German sounding, Tim. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sir. Should we go back to Joe? Yes, Joe. Thank you. Tim, we I hope you feel go better, Sweden. buddy. I gotta go. We go, go, go to yeah. Sweden. Go. Joe, now. Yes, yeah. yes, I, yes, I yes. I just got a... Yes. Tim, you requested a, a review of the Magic Christian, the Ringo movie. I could not basically. have requested that. What, what, in, my, <laughs> in, my, in my wildest dreams. You, 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 you asked if it was worth the time constraint that it put on the Get Back sessions. Uh -huh. And I'm just, yes. I watched it. I, I'm a film enthusiast. And I just want to say it, no, 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 it's not worth it. It's not well known as a great movie. No, it's not a, a bad little, idea. It, and it's a great book. It's a fantastic book, Terry Southern. Uh, I recommend the book highly. Are you an Ringo AM radio more host? Animated. Uh, AM? No, I mean, you just no. You have a nice voice, yeah. and you, I you look say, like you're from Garth Marenghi's Dark it's Place. It's not his first time. Yeah, it does. Not <laughs> his look first at, time on a I, his, like, I, get, I genuinely yeah. get that reference. Mm -hmm. I, well, wait, how am I supposed to take that? Good. <laughs> it's a good thing. Oh, great. good? Good thing. Yeah. Hi. I'm not the flute guy. My name's Joe LaRocca as well. And oh, yeah, Joe. Guy. Hey, Joe, maybe Joe can guy. be our, like, uh, he could read, uh, read like, uh, headlines or, new, like, you'd be our news guy. Joe, what's going on in the news? Uh, today, James Carville eats a po' boy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't know. This is the only well, you thing know, speaking of the of. news, did you see this story about the... Uh, the heart trans, the pig transplant, the guy that got the mm -hmm. heart. Right? I have been, I swear to God, I've been on the heart transplant list for real. For real? This is no joke. I'm on my, my fourth pacemaker right now. Oh, wow. This is no joke. And I've been watching this story very carefully. Well, I do, even you know the a... new, do you know the latest news that the guy that got this pig heart transplant, he, he was convicted of murder, not murder, he stabbed somebody. You're like 20 years ago. He, is this uh, a pun? No, it's not a pun. <laughs> uh, I had it up in my Come stories on, here. Oh, uh, man. He, yeah, he was convicted and uh, served time, I guess, for um, for stabbing somebody so people are seven upset times. that he's getting it? They, of course they he, are. People are upset about everything. He paid, he paid he's a real he's world not of gonna, who he's deserves not, a He's an heart. experiment, man. He's an experiment. I he's, know. They must have been thinking, happen. like, this might not work, so let's yeah. find some <laughs> louse. You know what the Give benefit me. of eating of uh, getting a pig heart is, Tim? What? If, if, you're, if you encounter a, a cannibal and they happen to be Muslim or Jewish, they probably won't eat you. They won't eat you. <laughs> All right. Something to think about. So we <laughs> Thanks, Joe. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. And, and listen, listen. We hope you get your heart. We hope you get the heart you need. And yeah. uh, we, we we really cannot afford to oh, whoops, lose. Sorry, I mean, whoa. Showing us? We simply oh, cannot wow. afford to lose one listener at this point. Okay, it is terrible <laughs> for business if we. Matt, where's the auction at these days? Well, the auction is good. There's a little bit of uh, controversy, of course. The that first <laughs> bidder seems to. Well, he's he's treating it cumulatively, so he's adding mm. to his bid, mm. which I guess is acceptable. Huh. So he's up to forty five dollars now. Whoa! Or she? I don't know. I'm just assuming. And then we have a bid at forty two sixty nine, but that's in Canadian dollars. No right? women are stupid enough to fall for this, by the way. <laughs> this is only going to be dumb guys. Yeah, I can't convert that Canadian. That's Craig Beer's forty two sixty nine. But I, I'm into the cumulative thing. Kevin in the chat will tabulate. Very interesting. What's happening? Uh, let's see. Let's take another Zoomer. Or how about another Hotliner? Sure. We, uh... I'm still unmuted. Oh, well, mute yourself then. <laughs> Joe, I, I... He kind of sounds like the guy the from best. Goodfellas. You, know? you are obsessed with the way this guy sounds. <laughs> I mean, I'm impressed. <laughs> uh, Once right. you get his number, Love his voice. You after the show. 913, you're on the air. I'll give him my heart. Yeah, give him the heart. 913, Swap. Sadie? Hey, fellas, what's up? Hey, Sadie, how are you? Where's your area code? Where are you calling from? Uh, Kansas City area. area. <laughs> I wanted to call about your funeral. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Give me your, yeah. What, we, let, uh, I hate when I pr propose a subject and then it dies on the vine. So go ahead. What do you, what's <laughs> the quote? Keep Kansas it alive. City. Kansas City, here we come. Um, so I actually wanted your permission while you're alive because I'll feel pretty gross about doing this if I don't get it while you're alive. To Photoshop like a kind exchange you had with a fan, and I would be the fan. So then it's like when, where, like people are like, "Oh, 
you know, he's such a nice guy. And then they're like, oh, who's this person that he was friends with? You know, it's self-serving in both ways. I kind of don't get what she's getting at, but... Wait, so if someone Damn, comes up to you and says, I'll be my like friend knows like, you. A little DM, like, hey, keep your head up, Sadie. You know, you, you were my mentor, you know, all this kind of stuff. Kind of inflate myself. And then you look like a nice guy. Oh, yeah. But I don't want to do it unless I get permission from you while you're alive. And I think oh, other I see. office hours you want to do s- it. Like, oh, he cares about the fans so much. Oh, yeah. So you're suggesting, let me walk me th- walk my audience through it. You want, you're suggesting that you mm-hmm. send me a message asking for advice or something. I send you something very nice back, very supportive. Yes. And then now we have a record. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Now we have almost like a blockchain yes. situation. <laughs> Irrefutable proof. And, you know, if... And the if journalists are going to be too lazy to look through she- the podcast to find that this was a setup. It's a put on! <laughs> <laughs> I like yeah. it, Sadie. Exactly. Uh, permission granted. Okay, I'll uh, check I'll, my DMs later today something. and get you back something very supportive, and uh, and just you know more evidence of my uh, magnanimous attitude towards my audience. It's kind of a cool app idea Perfect. or something, just like a log of funeral stuff you can add to, so they. So then, like you your, just pull up, your like, spouse doesn't have to like stress yeah, out no about like finding everything. Yeah, no one has like, to think about all these, all these memories. Pictures. It's just like you're logging it through their life. You just and um, then it's you the know way. Tim said something nice at the <laughs> restaurant today. I, Mem- good gonna, memories. It's like you're like, what are you doing, Doug? And I'm like, oh, I'm just adding to your funeral. Um, that thing is just that nice thing you did. I'm adding that to your <laughs> memory, your funeral eulogy. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's it's called like writes, it writes a speech for you at the end. <laughs> oh, it generates a speech. Yeah. It generates all like, the images like, and stuff that yeah, like, like puts the, it together. I think that's a great idea. Yeah, <laughs> you don't have to even go up there. You just hit play. Right. You don't. Have, yeah. You don't. All right. I'll, I'm gonna I'm gonna role play too. something with you, Doug. Um, hi, is uh, Doug listen up there? Uh, yeah. Hi. Hi, Doug. This is uh, Jenna Stringer from Uprocks. Uh-huh. Um, I'm doing a little piece. I'm so sorry about your friend Tim who passed away. That's okay. It's terrible. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to, I know you worked with him a lot. You guys, you worked on a bunch of his shows and you I guess you guys did some podcasts and I, I never listened to it, but, um, do you have a quote? Do you have anything that you'd want to say about him? I'm just doing a little piece. It's, I don't know what it's going to run tomorrow. I don't want to take up too much of your time. Just a quote from, for Uprocks? Yeah. Well, do you want to see my, my app I have? <laughs> well, I'm just sorry. I, I have, I have a million things to do. <laughs> the Queen Elizabeth, Queen Elizabeth died as well. And we're doing a bigger piece on her, but... <laughs> Um, do you have anything I can print on your uh, on anything about Tim that that we, we would want to print? Yeah, um, it's sad that he passed away. That's so it. Really, yeah. So he has a, he had a lot more great things to, ahead of him. What what was the re- last part there? He had a lot of great things ahead of him that I wish I could have seen. <laughs> okay. a lot of great albums and podcasts. All right. I gotta go. Thank you so much. Um, and it's D O U G L U S S. I use Doug E-N- Pound. That's kind of like my. People will find my Instagram and stuff from that. Okay. Okay. Ring, ring, ring. <laughs> is this Vic, Victor Burger? Is it Burger? Who is this? Hi, this is Jenna Strange from. Jenna <laughs> Strange. This is uh, Pat Morani from uh, AV Club. This is Pat Morani from the AV Club. We're closing okay. our doors in a couple weeks, but we okay. are doing a few more stories. Okay. <laughs> and what do you want? What do you want from me? We're, yeah, I just want to let you guys know we are going out of business. But um, I wanted to. I know I'm so sorry to hear about your friend Tim Heidecker's passing. I wanted who? to see if you, <laughs> who who is Tim this? Heidecker. I'm, he was the host I've, of Office. I haven't seen Tim in 30 years. Oh, I'm 75 I, I, now. Oh, you are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, that's a name I haven't heard. He, he he fired me back in 2023. Oh, so so do you have any um, quote on his passing? He passed away this morning. Oh, that's shocking. Um, yeah. yeah, you can just say that. That's shocking. <laughs> <laughs> Best of luck. <laughs> that's shocking. Did you did you hear how he died? <laughs> no, I didn't hear anything about it. What do you... dysentery? Oh, okay. Well, di- well diarrhea. So he, he, he was... had diarrhea that wouldn't quit. <laughs> okay, he drank bad water. Yeah, he drank bad water. <laughs> Okay. All right, I, I got to go. Uh, I got to yeah, well, wipe my wife. Uh, she, she's like in the bathroom, stuck in there, and I need to help her. <laughs> she's stuck in the bathroom? Yeah, she has a, she has a, she's old. She has, needs her diapers changed. So, <laughs> can I we're print 75. That? Can I print that? You can print that. You can tell the world. Thank you. All right. See ya. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's our show today. Thank you so much. Um, oh, wait. No, we're just getting started here. Thank, thank you, Sadie. Uh, thank you.
<laughs> Let us welcome to the show. I believe we're ready for our yes, special what guest. A, what an auspicious intro. What a way to do we is there any possible way to transition in psychologically, uh, mentally, spiritually? Let us focus. Let's get a little music here. Focus. I'm gonna say a little. Lord, pray that I can make an interview that's respectful, that's interesting, that's captivating, that's respectful, <laughs> but entertaining too. And I hope that our guest brings, from her side, I, I pray that she brings great energy, great insights, and great depth. And may it be one of the great interviews of the modern age. It's a lot of pressure, Lord. You better do it, or I'm dropping you. All right, let's welcome musician, author, singer. Uh, I'm gonna ask her how she prefers to be uh, spoken to. Do you, Michelle, well, let's just say it, Michelle Zauner, 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 uh, <laughs> who goes by, <laughs> So far, this is going very well. Uh, goes under the nom de cœur, Japanese breakfast. Japanese breakfast. Is Michelle there? Hi. Hi. Can I call you Michelle? I don't know if this is one of those things, like you're not like the edge from U2 or anything where I have to call you. You go by Michelle. Yeah, I prefer the precipice. Um, how, where are you calling from today? I'm in Brooklyn, New York. <sighs> Damn it. <laughs> I thought you were in Philly. No, what happened to Philly? Were you lived in Philly uh, for a while? I moved. You moved? Yeah, I, moved. I lived in Philly for a while and then I, I moved uh, in the beginning of 2020. Well, wherever you are, are you happy? I am. Okay. Um, <laughs> oh. It's going uh, great so far, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> How are you so today? Let's start with that. I always like to ask how everybody is. I'm well. How are, how are you? Thank you for asking. No one's asked me that yet today. I'm really good. I'm full of coffee. I feel maybe a little too much, a little too much adrenaline this morning, a little too much sauce in me. I just flew back from New Orleans, so I've, I'm full of spice, full of meat. My body has not digested it all yet. You ever spend time in New Orleans? Uh, I have. You enjoy it down there? Um, I do. <laughs> you know what? I'm fucking, I'm asking yes, no questions. And I've been, I've been on the other end of this, Michelle, as you know, so many times. And what makes me a bad interviewer is <laughs> what I should have learned by now is you can't ask yes, no questions. So what's the best, what's your favorite thing about New Orleans? <laughs> um, drinking in the street is cool. <laughs> yes. We love drinking in the street. We were down there, I was walking with my friends, and we found a phone in the street. We found an uh, iPhone, like right in the middle of the street. And what do you think we did? Dunked it in uh, whiskey. I'm asking my guest, <laughs> oh, Doug. I, oh. <laughs> uh, tried to open it. Correct. Call someone, call a friend. We tried, what well, we did, we thought about it for a little bit. We said, what would we, what should we do? We, uh, our friend who is maybe more clever than us, realized you could say, this is a good tip. You can say, uh, Siri, call dad. Our, or call mom. Our phones and so are we, doing that right now. We tried that. <laughs> we tried it and it worked. Somebody picked up, the, the phone rang, the person picked up. We said, we just found this phone. And through a few different, like a uh, little bit of more information, this person gave us another number. We called that number and we got the phone back to the person. It was a beautiful thing. It sounds like a mini series. It was, a, it was, the person could not believe that they, that, that we had done this act of kindness. In fact, mm. they kept saying, you, this person there and then kept going, you're a rock star, man. You're a <laughs> rock star. I can't believe you did this for me, man. This is unbelievable. How can I ever repay you? But it's just a phone. Anyways. What? What? 
What did you say? Well, How we didn't want to get into it. It, it got yeah. almost felt like that we were leading our, into like because the person was in New Orleans. They were obviously like I think they were there for business, and they were like, "Where can we meet up? I want to buy you a drink. I want to buy you a drink." I'm like, "I don't want to. We don't want to drink." Tim, we, can I ask what kind of phone it was? It was an iPhone. Aha. Uh -huh. I guess with the Siri, I could have yeah, figured that, that out. Good. Anyways, Michelle, congratulations on your Grammy uh, nominations. Thank you. What did you do to celebrate the uh, big announcement? Uh, I, 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 I drank at a bar. You have a drinking um, problem, Michelle. I've been picking up on this. Drink, this is, no. um, I'm a little I, concerned. We played a fun game where we were like looking up all of the best new artists um, of every year and guessing who, who won that year, which was fun. Oh, is the best, from your research, is the best new artist uh, typically uh, a, f a, f a uh, harbinger of great success, or are there some best new artists that then kind of, uh, that you've never heard of? You know, is it a good, is it a good uh, way to see historically, oh, that person went on to have a huge career, or, or is it uh, kind of random? Yeah, it's pretty impressive. I mean, it's, it's interesting. It's good to know that if and when I lose the Grammy nomination that I'm in very, very good company. Who are uh, who are you competing against? Um, uh, in Best New Artist, it's Olivia Rodrigo, Arlo Par. There's a bunch of people. There's like ten people. Yeah, yeah. Um, they expanded it. Do you consider so, yourself to be like a dark horse, a uh, underdog in that category? Is there sort of like a? I mean, Olivia Rodrigo seems like she's like a big, huge pop star. Yeah, I definitely feel like a a dark horse. <laughs> Let's <laughs> vote. I mean. I don't, we don't have any control over this because I don't think the Grammys are a popular vote situation. So mm -hmm. all we can do is wait and hope for the best. But the Grammys got pushed, right? Yeah, yes, they did. Were you supposed to perform at them? No, not that I... Oh, <laughs> not that you know. <laughs> <laughs> but I was definitely, uh, I definitely will be attending and was planning on attending, so... Well, that's nice. Yeah. Um, how was that? Uh, when did you do that Wilco thing with the, you did? I saw you did a, a guest vocal with Wil Wilco at the Austin City Limits. I did and I, I met your former guest there, which Ooh. was a big deal. Bill, Bill Horse Penis Callahan. <laughs> <laughs> if Bill Callahan would have done Jesus eccentric, Jesus don't cry. No, he did. He did, um, <laughs> he did like a like a. I want to say it was like an almost like a 10 minute version of Sky Blue Sky. Oh. And it was one of the most haunting, beautiful oh, things I've, wow. I've ever seen. <laughs> so uh, did you grow up as a fan? Would you would you grow up a fan of Wilco's? Like, you, would you say? Yes, definitely. Huge, huge Wilco Me fan. Me too. I did like the kind of almost famous thing where I went up and it was like, Jeff, Nels, yeah. Greg, <laughs> Mike, like, so good to you. Uh, and yeah, it was, it was a, a really surreal Dream come true. I mean, I, I feel like I've I've been ripping off Wilco my entire career. I mean, so. I think uh, we we get we take we take Wilco for granted, don't we? We do. I think that they're uh, you know one of the great American rock bands. I remember seeing. I remember there's a few records I really remember seeing for the first time and thinking this looks cool. I bet I'm gonna like this. And one of them was uh, being there. I just remember seeing the the way you could, you know, it just, it looked, kind of reminded me of the band, the band, the band record, that kind of brown, earthy, or wildflowers <laughs> or something. It just felt very, like, warm, and of course, I fell in love with it, and if, and we had Jeff on the show, but oh, it was a bad experience, I think, because we were just getting used to Zoom, and this, I mean, this is still a little, you know, it's still a little awkward after all, after a couple of years of doing this. But it's way better than it was. And when we had Jeff on, right, Matt? It was a little shaky. It's the lost episode. We lost the video. The oh, we, stream went we don't down. Even, there's no record of yeah. it even. <laughs> it's just audio. So, but anyways. So what's, um, what are you doing? It used what are you to be doing? Uh, what's it's going on? Now. What are you doing this week? What's your, what's your schedule like? What's your calendar like? Um, I'm going to L.A. and we're playing... Uh, the James Corden show, which is exciting. <laughs> you're not coming here to play my show. You're playing wow. James Corden show. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, to be fair, uh, I was supposed to be in LA, and then I got COVID, so I oh. couldn't. Uh, yeah, he I couldn't come. So you so got we had uh, the the late night show, and then James Corden got COVID. So everyone. And you're one of these oh. anti-vaxxers. 
No, I'm definitely <laughs> boosted and very uh, careful. Because I was reading that you were a big anti-vaxxer. That's, I guess that's some bad info. Oh, hmm. okay. That's fake news. Fake news. James <laughs> Corden. Well, you got to watch yourself around him. But no, that's great. I mean, that's, uh, <laughs> I don't know. What, what, what you've done, uh, have you done all the late, is he the last late night art, uh, show for you to do? Or have you, have you done them all? Um, we did Jimmy Fallon and, and we did the Jimmys. We did Fallon and, and Kimmel, but they were, it was before they were doing in-studio performances. Oh. So this will be our first like real late night studio performance. What does that sound? I, I'm assuming it's from her. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think oh, you might have a train. It's my heater. Give us your, give us a, oh, okay. I was going to say, we love, we love when we get a view of where our guest is calling. Maybe she'll do Carville. Are you doing Carville? <laughs> Are you doing Bill Maher? Carville? No, never like mind. Like ice cream? What, one of the other Jimmys. <laughs> Carvel. Carvel. Um, yeah, maybe you'll do Bill Maher. I mean, what if Bill Maher started having musical guests? That would be weird. <laughs> um, yeah. What about this? Uh, I want to ask you a question about... Do you have any questions for me, by the way? This has all been about you. I always like to yeah, make who this... are all these people? Is this normal? Like, I am looking at so many people. And oh, you guys are Zoom? like... So Small, yeah, and then the box keeps like moving around. This shit is weird. This Someone's is our like, studio oh, audience. Right oh, this, this is weird. This is our studio is audience, weird. really. Oh, um, there's a studio audience. Okay. In a way, in a Got way, it. a virtual studio Got audience. It. And I'm sure they all have questions They're for all you. Men. <laughs> a lot of men. Is that what you said? <laughs> <laughs> Are you seeing OHL? Look for OHL. Hot. Yeah. Is there a trick to get less men? I know. In you know what? I have, people always jump to that conclusion, but I see a, f a lot of women. Can we have all the women raise their hands if you identify as a woman? See? There's Raina yeah. Doris. You know Raina Doris from World Cafe? That might be on another page. I realized there was like three pages. Yeah. There's a million people watching right now, Michelle, so be careful what you say. We have a million, a million souls listening to the show right now. Theoretically. Um, so no questions for me. Got that. You, you dodged that. <laughs> My question. You answered it. <laughs> um, speaking, you were a fan of, you grew up a fan of Wilco, uh, grew up a fan, fan of mine, my work? I did. I'm, I, I've watched, uh, Tim and Eric. I Thank feel you. like a lot of the boys in my life. <laughs> <laughs> and did you, would you say more, you tolerated it more than anything else? More tolerated it? Um, I enjoyed it. it. Appreciated it. Thank you, Tim. I appreciated it. Okay. Fan. We, uh, you and I were two ships crossing in the night uh, a few months ago playing the Desert Days Music Festival. How was that for you? Um, that was really, really fun. How was it for you? I, I, I'm such a huge fan of Wise Blood. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was so fun. I mean, we, um, we had one rehearsal the day before, and then just threw, just went out there and did our best, and it worked out pretty well. You know, it was good. This, it was, sounded really good. Like, I don't know how you uh, felt about the sound, but I felt like when I was on stage, I felt very comfortable. Sometimes you get up in those situations and you're just lost. You don't know, you know, the sound's all weird. But I felt like I could have stayed up there a long time. Um, I do like some of their songs. I love your new record, by I mean, I really do. It's so great. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. How about you? You're, you're uh, happy with it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so. It's been, I feel like it's been, I haven't listened to it in a while. So, yeah, do you go, you I, don't go, why would you go back and listen? Only to like maybe rehearse and get ready to play live, but you don't sit around listening to your own music, do you? Uh, That's a sign of a, a lunatic. Um, I feel like when I finished it, I, w I was listening to it a lot. But at this point, we finished it almost like two years ago. So right, are you? Uh, act are you? Do you have any news to make? Are you in the studio? Have you have, have you have you uh, banked some music? Uh, I am yet to bank some music. Um, I'm actually working on the screenplay for my book, Crying oh. in H Month, right now. Which Interesting. Is That's is that news? Um, Has it been optioned? Has the book it's been, been options? Options. The book has been optioned. So it's uh, happening. It's happening. Are you going to be you... in it? No, no. Why not? Uh, I don't. I don't enjoy acting, and I'm too old for any of the. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no. 
Fair enough. Well, they can de-age you like they did Robert De Niro in uh, <laughs> Irishman. Yeah. They can actually, they, they can actually, um, like, they de-age you, and then they can accentuate your acting in in post as well, like in spe with special effects. They can make you a better. A lot of these actors okay. now, they're just phoning just it in. Them. They come in, they're like, I'll read the lines, and then uh, in with the CGI, they add better acting to the performance. So. Okay. Well, maybe I'll consider. <laughs> You know what we want? I was just shooting something, and this is such a, um, this would be so funny. The director had mentioned this idea, and I've thought about this as well, but when you're, when you're shooting something, uh, as something a little bit professional, like a professional TV show or a movie, there, the process is they have stand-ins that, that kind of stand in, as you would, and kind of go through the scene so that the cameras and the lights can figure out where to go, and so the actors can, you know, look at their phone in their director's chair and don't have to be standing around. But somebody, but the, oftentimes they go through the scene with the stand-ins and they're holding the sides there. But somebody thought they should record those and then make like a parallel movie <laughs> that's just, that's all the stand-ins <laughs> holding their sides. Because they always end up kind of looking like the, the actors in a way, or they're wearing yeah. similar wardrobe. Um, or like just dissolve over the actual footage and stuff. I think that would be fun. That would be very sick. Say again? <laughs> How about this Michael Imperioli in your video, huh? Yeah. How'd you uh, score that? Um, we just asked him and we thought that he would be down because like um, he's a music fan. He has like cool taste in music and... Uh, I thought that he would be <laughs> he was. He's a really like cool, creative, artistic man. It's nice to have that in a video because it sometimes I'm sure it draws people in that might not have been exposed to your music, right? I want your skin. Stop that. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> They've got that's sick to play your mouth. to my guest. That's I want your eyes. They got they got sopranos drops. Yeah, I can see that. You understand? I love it. Yeah, I can I'm see that. I'm trying to like pinpoint where what episodes are from. But uh, yeah, it was really funny. It was hard to not call him um, Christopher. Christopher, <laughs> Christopher, what are you doing in the video? <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure that he might have said mozzarella at some point too oof, when we were talking. Oof, maron, the mozzarella. It was really hard for me to not. Well, the video is great, and he's. Uh, Thank you. He's. I always just, you know, I just love to see, I have such a, I have such a fondness for The Sopranos. It just, it warms my heart to see any of those guys do anything. Totally. Um, well, I feel like I just saw um, the new episode of Euphoria and Artie Bucco's wife is, plays like a major cameo. Oh. I, I too love to see The Sopranos. Oh. Um, she's. In the <laughs> she's in, I think she's in The Irishman too, right? She's one of the. Artie. <laughs> That's my impression of Artie Bucco's wife from The Sopranos. Artie! All right. Well, listen, we don't want to keep you. Can, Artie? I, can I ask you a question? Oh, yes. Vic has a question. Uh, uh, I was just wondering, like, how like, creatively, over the past few years, we've been through some dark stuff. Like, how, how are you finding your creativity? Do you have any? I thought of that question, too, by the way. But I was just wondering, because, like, I, you know, we're in such a dark place. So I wonder how it affected you, how your songwriting may have changed. Did you pick up a new instrument? Like, how is it different two years than, than uh, you know, now? Yeah, that's a great question. I feel like for I agree. me... I agree. I agree. It's a good question. I'll Thank give you. Vic credit for <laughs> Thank that. You. I, I don't, I don't have an issue with that. I'm not, I'm not threatened by his question. <laughs> I had a long time to think, you know. I was sitting here quiet. Um, yeah, I feel like this was the first couple of years, like, as such a purist for the arts, that I really questioned what our job was and all of this. It felt very unimportant for right. the first time. Um... But I try, like, in any kind of dark period of my life to just be, um, to focus on some kind of, like, regimen, uh, just, like, palpable <laughs> regimen. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I, I got really into practicing the piano, which was something that I didn't really do a whole lot because it just felt like if you show up every day and practice this thing, you, it, you will get better. And there's something really promising and comforting about that. And so I, I found myself... Um, practicing an instrument a lot more, which was, which was nice. 
What is your, uh, now you've raised the bar. You've yeah. raised the bar. <laughs> yeah, now I got questions. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. Let me ask you, what is, what, what is, do you have a process for writing, for songwriting? Do you sit, is there something you do all the time or is it, or is it just sort of comes however it comes and then you just kind of work on it? Um, I feel like it, I, I tend to write pretty quickly and it, it's like a very in, intuitive process. On the I, piano I or the guitar or how do you, what, what's your um, instrument? I used to source? like exclusively write on the guitar and then when I started making more and more albums, I, I tried on different instruments. Sometimes I would start with like a keyboard or a tuba. piano or a bass. Sometimes it's a beat. No tuba yet. Sometimes but... you sit there with a tuba. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's not bad. <laughs> 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 All right, Doug, your question. How, um, how do you um, set up a schedule? I see you say you have a regiment. Like, how do you... She didn't say she has a regiment. Yeah, she's, she did. Okay. But there's consistency to her day. But like... And, and rely... Like, how do you go about like saying, I'm going to do the piano at... Do you, do you say like from pick a time and you just say, I'm going to... That's like my schedule because... A lot of us who are kind of freelance with free time, it's like hard to, to like yeah. force yourself to do that. Or do you have a manager saying, get on the piano. <laughs> you got a manager. That would be wild. You're uh, working hard enough. Get on the fucking piano. Work. <laughs> right, those hits. Yeah, my it's manager crazy. calls me at 9 a.m. every morning and asks me if I've practiced the piano yet. Um, I, I feel like the, the best thing to do is set like the bar really, really low. So it's just like, you have to practice piano for like 15 minutes today or read a book for 15 minutes or write for 15 minutes. And that way it's really uh, manageable and uh, it gets done. Do it's more you, like setting times. Do you play by ear or do you, do you uh, read, read the music? Um, I am not very good at playing by ear. So I do like, I, I do like sheet music. That's oh, really? interesting. Oh, wow. So, so you were, tra that. were you trained? Uh, did you have like lessons as a kid and stuff? Yeah, I started playing the piano when I was five, but I'm not, I'm not as good as I should be for right. playing piano since I was five. And then I took some guitar lessons, but I'm not very like classically trained, but I, I do know how to read music. I set the bar low and I've practiced my high jumps. <laughs> <laughs> That's clever. Do, very... do you like that kind of humor? <laughs> <laughs> I, when I do the well, limbo, I set I my bar low I too, and it gets me really good. I can't jump very high. <laughs> Um, you're working on the screenplay. What the so you were you were doing final draft? Final draft. You're doing uh, <laughs> what kind of software do you use for your screenplay writing? I'm I'm using Final Draft. Can I give you a recommend? Recommend? <laughs> yes, please. Well, but you're not you're not. Are you collaborating with somebody? Uh, not yet. It's like if I fail, I have to. I think. Right. I use this program. This is not a plug, not an advertisement. I'm not getting paid for this. It's a program called writerduet.com. And it's kind of like Google Dro it's kind of like Google Docs. It's all um, like in the cloud so we can Me, Yeah, collaborate I started using together. that a little bit on your recommendation. I love it. Um, no, but w so your uh, my real question was you're working on the screenplay. Is there another book in you or is this is is that uh, something you're also working on or thinking about? Crying at H Mart, which is a huge <laughs> Was a, is a big success. Oh, yeah. Oh, cute. I mean, that's I amazing. Mark. I love H Mart, by the way. <laughs> you do. I was just there yesterday. <laughs> and I was on the little TV it's at the, the checkout best. line. It's it was really best. cute. Um, yeah, I do want to, I would love to write another book. I think, like, once you learn that you can write a book, you're like, oh, I, now I can do that. So I would love to write another one. But you, and, but you were making music. Uh, you you were uh, Japanese breakfast was an established project before the book, and so the the book was like a a, a, a sideline a sideline for you, or you were like doing both things at the same time. Yeah, I started as 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 a musician, and then um, I started writing the book uh, on on tour. A, a lot of the book I, I wrote like in the van or on planes or in, in the in show time. Uh, and yeah, I was always I was kind of doing it on, on the side with a lot of like the downtime I had on tour. Did you know you were writing a book when you started writing it? Did you, or were you just writing to get stuff out to get out of your head? Um, it I started with an essay, um, and and through writing that essay, I kind of realized that there was so much to to say that there was a, a book length of material, and then I kind of 
started writing a few chapters um, just to see what would what would come out, and then uh, I got a book deal from from those chapters. And okay, finished. so let me ask you this because I think our listeners would be very interested in this because there's a lot of a lot of creative people. There's a lot of people who are aspiring to do things. What did you? What was the? What did you? Did you go to your manager and say, "I have an idea for. I have something. I've written this. Can you? Can you pass this around? How did that first step away? You know, step from just you and the writing go uh, get out into the bigger world? Um. Well, in 2016, I wrote an essay and I sent it to like every. It was like about you know learning how to cook Korean food with this uh, Korean YouTube vlogger named Mang Chi, who was. Uh -huh. uh, amazing and um she i just thought it was like a cute story it was like kind of like a korean julie and julia story right. and i pitched it to like every food blog and i submitted it to every entry uh, like at literary contest without an entry fee and then just was like rejected for like nine months Those like, idiots. from different publications and then i got an email from glamour magazine that i won their essay contest of the year and um i won like a meeting with a literary agent and uh wow. like five dollars and a publishing and and glamour and and so i yeah i quit my job wow. <laughs> and, like, and uh yeah, well, you had put out record you had put out a few records up to this point you put out a record or what do you yeah i used to be in another bit like very unsuccessful band and around that same time that that won the essay contest my band Japanese Breakfast put out its first record and um we were starting to get uh like we got booked on an opening tour and, and things were starting to happen there so it right. kind of like happened simultaneously right. and I was kind of the what's the job you quit I sold uh I was a uh in advertising I was a sales assistant for a company that um for an outdoor advertising company that did like hand hand painted mural advertisements uh-huh so it was kind of like, cool. It was kind. It was kind of cool, but not. It, but it was. It just was definitely a, not cool. It's like one right. of those jobs that you like, in on in words sounds like kind of interesting, but right. in reality, you're just really you're just cool doing stuff. like administrative yeah. stuff. Basically, I would like if we got like a contract with Vans, I would like make maps where I, around the wall that was like these are the skate parks around this wall and right. like the shoe store around this wall were by you, this wall. Were you a good were you a good worker or did you or were you like uh, you know f slagging off and writing lyrics and uh, and you know hoping you'd get fired or were you a good worker? I, have a, I, have a I thought I was a good worker and I went into like my year end review being like I'm going to get a promotion and a raise and they're like you're doing a really bad job. <laughs> 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 and then I realized that I uh yeah they didn't and then the guy felt really bad for me the owner I think and he he misspoke and was like oh I feel really bad that you are doing so badly and you had no idea like that's our fault like well you don't want to work here we'll give you a two month severance and I had been there for like nine months. And wow. so I was like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll just go then. <laughs> I, I had a job before I started doing this. I had a lot of jobs, but the last one I had was felt like I was kind of stuck there for, for like three years. I was in an office building in New York. And the, I think I've talked about this, but I was working at this place that rated video games, like whether it was for kids or adults, you know, it's called the ESRB. And I was so bad at, I was so, uh, such a lazy slacker guy and my job was to to monitor television to see if they were using that they were they were uh, p putting the ratings on the commercials the the right way which is just like really um over what do you call it like it, it was like you it's overly careful about this it was just almost like just busy work but i wouldn't even do that i would just sit and watch cnn and like fuck off and write my friends and they'd come in, they'd be like, why are you watching the news? Like, they don't advertise any video games on the news. Like, you have to watch, like, MTV and, and Comedy Central and stuff. <laughs> like, where you would actually happen to see video game commercials. Or, like, G4 was that. Yeah. And I would just, like, I just literally wouldn't do my job. I just would not do my job. And, and I realized I was supposed to keep a log of, mm -hmm. like, what I was doing. And so I would just make up a spreadsheet yeah. that was just fully fraudulent information right but they're never going to go check that are they well the problem was once i went on vacation and uh i was this is this this scarred me for so many years because i like i'm not going to check my email you know for i'm on i'm in mexico 
with my girlfriend and I'm just here to have fun. But then I go into like a cyber cafe. I'm like, I better check my email, see what's going on. I get this email from my boss. She's like, what the fuck is going on here? I just got this email that says you haven't logged anything in the past six months. And you know, like this full on like, oh fuck. I've been, I've been outed as a, as a fraud. But was that the end of your job? Is that it? No, I talked. She was. I think she had a, this. My boss had, had uh, thought I was cute, so I was kind of like, <laughs> "What?" <laughs> I think she just liked me, you know. She was. This old, she was. Well, we won't have to get into it. <laughs> I came back. I slept with her, and that was that. I just. No, I'm just kidding. You look like a cute guy. But uh, it's very hard for us creative people, Michelle, to 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 uh, you know to do what the do what they tell you. Oh, yeah, but I feel like it's yeah. good because you know now we know that like we can never go back there. Uh, we have no, you have no plan B, right? This is it. Um, I do kind of always feel like I'm like quietly building a resume with my project, which is true. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if you ever grow out of that, but I'm like, oh, now that I read the screenplay, like maybe if I get fired from playing music, I can like do this or something. Well, it's you're so very I smart. I mean, you're not. I know you're not strategic about this, but. Like as like me as well. Like you do, you keep you diversify your creativity. So you're not just yeah. one thing. You've got, you've got writing. You've got music. I'm sure you're going to do all kinds of interesting things in your career because you just seem like, you seem like a very uh, creative, but also a very uh, motivated person to, to do good stuff. You are and that's not gonna, your past. You're, that's going to come out in right very now. in all sorts of different ways. You did, I, I bet. Done some things you wish you hadn't Thank done. you. I well, hope, I hope. <laughs> I think something we like to do with some of our guests, certainly not yeah, all of them, salute. is we salute you and we salute your creativity. <laughs> ba -da -ba -da -da -ba -da -ba. The tuba. Um, with a tuba. <laughs> What's the rest of your day like? We'll see. So you're in New York, so it's one. It's uh, 2 p.m. there? Yeah. That's pretty much, you got the rest of the day to just, you've... You ever do that thing where you got like one thing on your calendar and you're like, well, that's all I have to, that, if I do that, that's, that's too much anyway. So I'm just going to take the rest of the day and watch movies or something. Or you got a big, big busy day. I have to actually pitch my screenplay today, which is, have you done that? You have to what? I have to pitch my screenplay to the studio that the, I'm like, oh I'm my ready God. to write. Why did you agree like, to do this to interview? Do you should have been focusing on that <laughs> all morning. In, in LA. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> Who are you pitching it to? Uh, Michael Zen uh, Zensky? So Michael Zensky and uh, Barbara uh, Klein at, at uh, Innovation Pictures? Quibi? <laughs> no, you're pitching it to MGM? To, uh, to MGM's Orion to Alana Mayo. I have to... Oh, don't say their uh, name. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they know. Like, he's the head of MGM Orion. Yeah. So, uh, well... They should, this shouldn't be a meeting. They should just go for it. They don't need to talk to you about it. Just go, go, just do the thing. Have you done that? Do you have any tips to get your thing made? I've, oh, I've pitched, of course, yes. I've pitched many things and you're doing it on Zoom, of course, right? You're, I love it. Yeah. Um, it'll be great. You just be yourself. It's, the work has been done, um, right? The book, the book's been written. The, you know, if they got issues with the screenplay, go tell them to fuck off. That's how you okay. should start. I'll tell them, I'll tell them that's it. Here, here's how, here's how you, you start. You go, well, thanks for doing this meeting. Um, I'm a big fan of movies and would love to see this book get made into a movie. I've already written the screenplay. Um, I'm, if you have any thoughts, please let me know. If you don't want to do it, fuck off. Fuck okay. Off. <laughs> and then hit end on the Zoom. Fuck off. Great. And you're like, this could easily be just an email. If you would rather just do it as an email, that would be less stressful. But no, I, this is this is cool. We could be we could be looking at the beginning of a of the process of the movie happening right here. What if the movie does get bought by MGM and we have the big premiere and you could you could we could date the time that it was pitched. Email and here on office hours. Yeah, <laughs> it's a big moment for us. This could be on the bonus features <laughs> of the DVD. It could be on the bonus features of the DVD. <laughs> All right, well, listen, I'm going to let you go because you need to focus and... Do you want a bowl? <laughs> oh, do you want to bid on this bowl that Doug she'd, she'd is giving She'd have to out? beat $45 because it's up to $45. Can you see it? Yeah. Um, I think I'm good. Yeah. All right, <laughs> I mean, Michelle, all right. congratulations again, and thank you so much for doing this and thank continued you. Goodbye, success. Everyone. Happy Goodbye, New Year. Man.
All right, let's do this. That was a nice that interview. Was wonderful. Wonderful, you said. It's great. Wonderful. It's a lot better than that Will Oldham, uh, Bill yeah. Callahan interview. Those guys didn't yeah, say a they word. Didn't, they didn't bring much. Jeez. And those guys expect to sell records. I don't think so. That's why you don't see them nominated for any Grammys. They sure have a lot to say when they're singing on their records, but when That's they come on true. the show, they don't say nothing. Mm -hmm. Well, listen, let's take a quick break. We'll be back. If let's, you want to continue Let's check it on, on that bowl real quick. Okay, yes. Bowl. So are we going to watch the video, the sales the... pitch of the video, maybe... No, we, could we, we can show that during the break, okay? <laughs> oh, that's a good okay. idea. I also have a song from somebody sent me a Bob uh, Saget tribute Ooh. track. So what, is it disrespectful? But that's about no. Oh, it's um, nice. it's a proper tribute. All right, you want to watch the bowl video, phone. then go into that. What's song the current bid? Drink? Still at four forty five. Forty five. Stalled out. Oh, but, you know we haven't out. really talked about it. So you know that's a lot over asking, but <laughs> uh, <laughs> sky's the bad. limit, baby. Well, listen, get your bids in now. Once again, it is coming with the Trident Vibes, uh, as seen in a video that now has over 100,000 views on YouTube. This? My this, bad news video. Do you, wanna, do you wanna give this to oh, throw that yeah. in there? Halloween crap. Kind of cool. Halloween crap, throw it in. Oh, for that. Vic, pass those cards. These, this oh, is those a, are that's good. actually worth it. No, don't These put are, that in. Those are pretty nice. All right, this Halloween crap is getting in there too. Right. Okay. And uh, Fig Bar. All right, we'll be back with much more show. Join patreon.com slash office hours. It is a cash grab, ladies and gentlemen. It's all just big old cash grab. You could save your nasty comments because I'm ahead of you. I'm way ahead of you there, baby. All right, see you in five. We'll watch Doug's video, play a song. Be back in five. It's Mr. 305 checking in for the remix. What's up, guys? I got a bowl for sale, and you got to check this thing out. So what we have here is a red bowl. It's oval, which you don't really see too often. Usually bowls are round. And the bowl is tapered at the bottom, as you can see, and the, the beautiful diamond pattern wraps all the way around. I'd say that's a bit of a gloss finish. I won the bowl at a white elephant party, and it had Godiva chocolate in it, which was really good. And oh, look, there's one piece of chocolate left. Sorry, but the chocolate cover pretzel is not included in the sale. There are three non-skid pads at the bottom. There probably should be four. I'll knock a couple bucks off for that. It does kind of rattle a bit, like a table at a coffee shop with one of the legs that's off, but you're not really gonna be leaning on the bowl. The bowl's just gonna sit there, so it shouldn't be a problem. This bowl was designed by Design Pack in Melrose Park, Illinois. Check out their website, 1-800-baskets.com. When I went there, they offered me 10% off, which I did not claim because the minimum order was 5,000 units. But it was made in China. China is in the Far East, and this bowl really made quite a journey to be here. There's a couple scuffs, there's a, there's a little scratch here, and there's a scratch there. But you know, that shouldn't really be a problem because when you put something in the bowl, you're not really gonna see that. I mean, you can't deny that it's a beautiful bowl. Imagine what this table would look like with no bowl on it. Pretty boring, right? Put a bowl on it, it's a beautiful table. So bottom line, I was looking to get 15 out of it, but I'll knock a dollar off because of the missing nonstick pad on the bottom. So 14, I think that's a fair price. The white elephant limit was 20, that's how much I spent. So if that sounds good to you, hit me up and uh, let's make a deal. Tonight's specials are cake and cock, and they're out of cake. 